we got ourselves another video regarding Nokutan and the localizers and the sub debacle. This one's called Localizers Hate This Anime, My Dear Friend Nokutan. Pretty interested in this because like we've been checking out the AI subs recently and they've been pretty decent. Free think, think. So this anime, my dear friend Nokutan, is getting love and hate at the same time. Getting love from the actual anime fans and yeah. the audience, but it's getting hate from localizers. Now, before I get into now, I don't know how true this is, and this is a separate type of hate. I think a lot of people hyped up Nokutan to be this, like, peak brain rot anime. There was so much expectations, and I don't think the anime is bad, but it's probably not what people were really expecting in, in regards to, like, a crazy, wacky-ass acid trip of, like, an experience. Some people compared this to, like, Nichijou. I haven't seen it myself, but people are like, it's not even fucking close to Nichijou. People should have never even made a comparison. wonder how many people actually are upset about that comparison, though to the reasons why i watched this anime yesterday and i gotta say man it's it's so weird but it, it's weird in a good way it's, fun. it's good where it's wild it's hard for me to really understand and really comprehend what the hell is going on in this anime but it's fun and it's funny it's about this girl who used to be a delinquent i wonder how this guy got this anime footage without the colors i wonder if this is some kind of software or some kind of app he uses to wash away the colors to bypass copyright so he can play these background footage roles for a longer time without cutting. I don't know. Which used to be like part of a gang wielding a spike thorn bat. <laughs> and now she's trying to be a good girl, honor yeah. roll student. So she's trying to get her past. And she comes across this girl who has antlers. So I don't know if she's part deer. The deer wants to be friends with her. And she can kind of sniff out her delinquent past. <laughs> She can also sniff whether or not she's a virgin, apparently. Due to her instincts, like her dear primitive primal instincts, she becomes this transfer student and <laughs> there's this one scene because this anime is so funny it's this one scene where she's getting introduced as a transfer student and mm -hmm. the teacher's like all right you can come in and she's about to walk through the doorway and she can't and she fucking destroys the door because her antlers keep hitting the wall constantly and, and instead of just turning her body sideways it's like and a dog in, to come in through a different angle it's like a dog with the fucking big brands that they're biting onto and can't walk into a door and it's like come on just move sideways she just like well it. And she just walks in with this Chica. gleeful smile and her antlers destroy the Chica. walls. And, they, it, and then the fucking glass shards got stuck on the teacher's face. All the kids got hit by the rock boulder debris, but no one cares. It goes in slow-mo and this theme music, like this tribal ancient Chica. theme music starts playing. And the students in the class are like all smiling and like, oh, this is so cool. And I'm like, yeah, wait a minute. This is, is all this, just so I don't normal. understand. Is this a world where people are part deer is that not a surprise to them and while she's walking through the walls pieces of i don't think there's supposed to be any type of logic in this show i think it's as simple as it's a crazy wacky show and everyone except koshi are just these npcs that sees a deer fucking walking into the class but they act as if it's just like another tuesday afternoon of the war are flinging at the students hitting them in the faces causing them to bleed but they're smiling and as if they're not even noticing it i'm like yo this anime is hilarious but you have to watch the scene i'm not doing it justice it's so damn funny the whole episode is hilarious and uh apparently the the intro theme song is getting a lot of love and i oh, listen yeah. to it yeah it's yeah the song is a bob it, it goes hard the, the intro song goes it hard. went so it's, viral it, it definitely stands out i think the intro song the trailers the first couple like actual things that people saw of Nokutan, something happened. The magic of the internet work that just turned into like an overnight sensational meme. The amount of people that's doing like the Shika no Kun no Kun no Kukoshitan Tan dance, the songs, it just went so viral. And that's like a really good thing. And now more people have the eyes on Nokutan to watch, which is really funny because like you have a show like Days of My Stepsister where they're trying so hard. Studio Dean is trying to make this a fucking cinema, bro. This is not a cheap anime. They're trying to make this into a whole movie experience. They're trying so hard to make a good story. And then there's fucking Nokutan. They're like, yup, the girls are tears. We're just doing dumbass shit. And everybody is talking about Nokutan more than a different anime that's actually trying to be good. But that's entertainment at the end of the day, right? You can try high effort, low effort. At the end of the day, the market will decide what is entertaining. Out amongst uh, anime intros. The part I want to get to why it's getting hate from localizers, but love from the fans. The localizers, apparently, I think they did AI translations, but I mm. think for the French translations, maybe more. 
but uh, they did AI translations and and that's pissing off a lot of localizers because of course they sense a threat that their job is can be taken away from them. And that does suck that people will lose their jobs and their livelihood because of AI technology. But I think the point of contention before, right, was there's a lot of woke localizers that takes material from, a, let's say, like a show like 2.5D Ridisa. There's a whole bunch of dialogue, a lot of Coomer degenerate dialogue that some of the Western, you know, localizers don't like. So they kind of censor that shit and make it a little bit more PG-13. So it's not really staying true to the thing. So a lot of people are using like these AI subs to kind of give not scuffed or botched subs. Because we have last two episodes of Nokotun, we watched the AI subs. And what did you guys think about the AI subs? I noticed that there were some mistakes for sure. It was not perfect. There were some grammatical mistakes, some spelling mistakes, but nothing so severe to the point where it just hindered me experiencing Nokotan. In fact, episode 1 and 2, I watched the official subs versus AI subs. I honestly could not tell a difference. So, it's an interesting situation where it sucks that people may lose jobs because of AI subs. But this is simply the reaction, a, the consequence of woke localizers not doing the source material justice and other people finding different methods of getting the subs. You know, you're, you're kind of just like reaping what you sow, right? And they're like trying to get sympathy from the anime. This is Katrina. Remember Rev's favorite uh, localizer, right? <laughs> fan community, the audience. And it's very odd because the fans are kind of like throwing it back in their face. Like, well, good. We would rather AI do our translations. Mm. It's, yep. it's funny because it almost makes me think like, what were y'all expecting localizers? Like you spent so long shitting on the fans when they would have these simple criticisms of just wanting faithful adaptations of their manga just like usually i like to like empathize with the people and the people that's losing their livelihood because of you know technological advancements but in this situation it's like you were actively shitting on the fans and giving them a service and a product that they didn't even ask for you're actively censoring the source material so it's like you kind of get what you fucking deserve don't you faithful adaptations overall and then when they ask for that and ask why you guys aren't doing that you throw it in their face and i remember this this famous panel that's uh a lot of people know about where i think it was the voice actors for uh mha my hero academia and one of the i think one of the sorry oh those pesky patriarchal societal demands were getting on my nerves so i changed clothes the text in red here is the self-inserted woke commentary from the localizers like who the fuck from japan would say pesky patriarchal societal demand you know this is just like the work of blue hair social justice activist and like no i'm not fucking alt right no i'm not homophobic no i'm not transphobic i acknowledge the society definitely the white people are number one in terms of the advantages they have of course it's a patriarchal male dominated white supremacist standard Yes, but I can also acknowledge that this shit has no place in fucking anime. Like, nobody asked for this shit. You inserted this bullshit in here. And now why are you getting mad that people are like, we don't want to hear this shit. We want the actual fucking real subs or the real source material. And if it needs AI, if we can only get that by using AI, then so be it. That seems to be what the fans are thinking. One of the directors also at Crunchyroll, she's also a voice actor. And when she got asked by a fan, hey, what do you think about the criticisms that fans have when you guys go out of your way not to do faithful adaptations? And she just has this nefarious, malicious response saying that Funimation has come under, let's call it criticism oh, for how they choose to. What the fuck is this resolution? But we're going to actually hear Katrina here. OK, let's call it criticism oh, for how they choose to adapt their scripts. Oh, for like a unnecessary couple of shows. hate. Yeah, got it. Yeah. So how, how would you like to respond to that kind of criticism? To the criticism? Like, I have a vagina. Deal with it. <laughs> That's so cringe, dude. That is like peak fucking... Uh, what was that girl? Amy something? Amy Schumer? Do you know who Amy Schumer is? She's a female comedian that a lot of people fucking hate. And a lot of people say, well, people hate her just because she's a girl. But it's like, no. The peak of her comedy is, haha, I have vagina. And it's like, okay. The whole answer with, I have a vagina, deal with it. You know what that means? That is literally a conditioned response given to people, fucking fem cells, 
that say this shit saying, oh, you only hate my takes, you only hate what I do because I'm a woman, because I have a vagina. Deal with it. That is their default answer. Ne they, they never talk about the actual things going on. She could have simply talked about, you know, the actual content at hand. The topic of localizers taking their own free will to change the script from the source material to suit their, you know, their narrative. But instead, they're like, no, what I'm doing is completely justified and you hate me because I have a vagina. Deal with it. This just like actively hurts your reputation. No one's going to take you seriously if you say shit like this. We are out here. It's going to happen. Deal with it. I'm sorry you're not getting laid. It's not about you. Like, like, no one... Who the fuck just asked about getting laid or not? She's just insulting this dude who asked her a question. She's getting triggered, making defenses, saying, Listen, it's not my fault you're a fucking incel, that you can't get laid, that you hate women. And that's why we're making these changes in these subs. Like, none of that has any connections. She has rationalized in her head that any criticism, any complaints about the work that she's doing is all done by incels that hate women. Therefore, no one can criticize me. This is the mentality that she has and why she's answering like a fucking NPC right now. Move on. Was, I'm and, sorry, I but also the question, like she just told me that happened. Oh, yeah, we'll talk about it later. But here's my feeling. Anytime I make like if I'm making misogynists and Nazis angry, then I'm doing all right. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Why are you categorizing the anime fans that are talking about the localization issue and you group them into a box to say, yep, they're all Nazis. They're all misogynists. Yep, the people that have an issue with me changing the source material with my own social narrative, those people are all misogynists. They hate women and they're Nazis. It's like... It's just, per it's the perfect argument to give if you have no argument, right? Instead of actually addressing why she's doing it, she just simply blames that anyone that has a criticism are just Nazis, man. Right. But I remember watching it. I was actually interested in hearing what she has to say because it's a true criticism. Like you hear some of the bullshit that gets injected to these, into the dialogue. And honestly, this is exactly what I'm talking about in those other rev videos. Remember how I said? the more right or more left you go, you come out the other spectrum. She probably thinks that she is such a, a person of ethics and morals and is so inclusive and she is all for women's rights and representation and fuck the Nazis, right? Hot take, Nazis bad, right? Oh my God. No, that's the very lukewarm take. But the more that you just assume everyone is like that, the more racist and you know, woke that you seem. Because she's going so fucking left that she is now calling any criticizers, that dude that just asked the question, as a fucking Nazi, as a fucking incel, as a misogynist. Again, a situation where you go too far into either side of the spectrum and you come out the other fucking way because this is a fucking circle at the end of the day. I like, I like, like, I never watched Dragons May, but I remember watching that one clip that everybody talks about, that famous clip. Coming! Hey! What Aspen. are you wearing that for? Oh, those pesky patriarchal societal demands. <laughs> okay, so the actual subs. Everyone was always saying something to me. So I tried toning down the exposure. How is it? Funimation dub with Katrina involved. Oh, those pesky patriarchal societal demands that hate women were getting on my nerves. So I changed clothes. Like... Nobody asked for the social commentary. If you wanted to have this commentary, open up your own fucking channel where you discuss shit like this about the patriarchal societal demands. You are fucking adapting the source material of an anime. I think this is like uh, my maid Kobayashi Dragon something, right? But this is insane. And then you would get a surprise that people say it. And then their defense is, oh, what? You don't think? Pesky patriarchal societal demands is a real thing? That must mean you're a Nazi. That must mean you're a misogynist, right? This is how they rationalize in their head. We're getting on my nerves. So I changed clothes. Give it a week, they'll be begging you to change back. Huh? You can come on in if you want. What's up, Asman? What do you think, Baldy? And this is like real, right? Like yes. this is it, it's it's like I, I refuse to fucking believe. Honestly? It. That's Honestly? If I did not have the earlier context and I watched this and if I was Asmin, I'd be like, yo, this gotta be actually like fan dub from somewhere else, right? Like this has gotta be AI. There's no way they actually said that shit.
But they did. That's awful. Like, what? How did that how did that happen? This has nothing to do with the original text. Why was that injected in? And that's another question I have. Why is this happening? Why the fuck do these localizers have all the power? Like, how did they even get into those positions? That's what I don't understand. Who hired Katrina to do this shit? Like, that's the thing I don't understand. Is it nepotism? Does she really have that much connections in the industry? Is it studios trying to be all inclusive and woke and trying to fit some kind of DEI incentive? That's why they're going out of their way to hire these people? Like, I genuinely don't understand why these people are even in positions of power. I don't get it. I'm like, oh, these people have, like, uh, ideological motivations here. I'm like, oh, damn, uh, localizing has been infiltrated by, like, activist-minded people trying to inject worldviews in there. And when she got called out of this at the panel, she just had this nefarious response. I'm Nazis, like, respond incels. Like, what is you having to be a girl have to do with any of this? And I'm like, what? Exactly, right? Why would you even make the comment about I have a vagina deal with it? That was never the point of the argument. We're asking about the fucking localization of anime. Then she jumps through mental gymnastics because her mentality, remember, if you speak against her, you're a Nazi and you hate women. What? Oh, you're man, you guys are really shitting on the fans. They just want faithful adaptations. And when you don't even go... like. The thing is, when, when this anime came out, my dear friend Nokatan and some of these localizers like, oh, man, hey, look, fans, or look, they were trying to get the audience to side with them. Look, AI is taking over the translations, and the audience just weren't side. Western localizer brags about deliberately botching High Dive's English subtitle for My Life as Inukai-san's dog. Hold the fuck up. I know that anime. <laughs> I'm not sorry for what I did to Inukai. That's the fucking anime where the guy got reincarnated as a dog for the pretty girls, right? Yeah, so like, she always picks these like, Coomer animes, right? She picks like the degenerate animes and then just changes the entire script. She did that shit with fucking, what's it called? Uh, 2.5D Ririsa as well, right? Not reincarnated? Oh, I thought the guy got reincarnated as a dog. It's just perspective of a dog that can speak? Interesting. How would you know that, Michael? Hold up. Hold the fuck up! Why do you know that? You must have seen the fucking anime! You must have- And don't tell me you only saw one episode! You probably watched fucking the whole fucking season, bro! You got the manga? Alright. Uh, Alright. <laughs> you got the manga even more. I don't with them. They were like kind of surprised. Yeah. And I'm like, well, what were you expecting? You've been- For years now, you've been shitting on fans. Just having simple criticisms and then they conflate criticism with hate. They automatically say, oh, uh, yeah, unnecessary hate. Well, no, it's, it's actually valid criticisms. And it's You know what unnecessary hate is? It's when someone comes into my fucking YouTube anime reaction and says, Why is bro talking so much? Shut the fuck up and just watch the anime, right? That is unwarranted criticism or hate where you don't even know what the fuck is going on. You're talking about shit that everybody wants, okay? So me dealing with them and calling them a monkey and blocking them or sometimes farming them... That isn't me being tone deaf, all right? I think that I am not Katrina. I have a pretty good grasp on what criticism and hate is. But this, they're just jumping to the gun immediately. Anything that you have to say against me is because you're a fucking Nazi incel. It's, it shows how much the fans aren't willing to sympathize with you when they're willing to settle for AI translations because AI, while it may not be the best tool right now or as sophisticated to do it. It's gonna get better. That's the scary thing about AI. Exponential growth. Bro, like the subs are gonna get even better within the next couple of years. A perfect translation. They're willing to settle for something that may accidentally get something wrong rather than you purposefully going out of your way to destroy something, the entertainment value of something. So it, it really shows the lack of sympathy that people have, but it's actually, it makes sense and it's warranted the lack of sympathy that people would have for you. Yep. And I'm telling you, man. I, I, like totally agreed. The sympathy part, usually, I am totally on the working forces side in regards to their job displacement because of AI technology. But this Katrina girl, man, like, I have no empathy at all. I have no sympathy. In fact, I hope that she fucking loses her job because she goes out and actively does this shit and shits on the anime fans. Like, you would think that if your job is on the line, if you're, like, teetering on fucking thin ice, 
your best incentive would be to offer a service that is better than AI. Because turn AI, maybe it's not perfect. It can't get everything correctly. So a human should be then able to provide something even better than the AI and give the people a reason to root for them. But she's doing the exact opposite thing. She's pissing people off and everyone's her fire, bro. Like, I have no empathy for this woman. I remember doing a live stream. Shout out to those who was uh, there and, and probably watching this video. I remember doing a live stream. We did a retro spec view of Toonami. We watched this video, this mini documentary on Toonami, the creation of it. And the voice actor for Spike Spiegel and Cowboy Bebop was part of that documentary. And he, you know, he answered some questions. And he talked about how at first, just when dubs became a thing, a lot of like anime purists were like, oh man, dubs are going to ruin anime. And those who did watch anime or Japan animation as they called it in those days really were intent on watching it in its japan animation what kind of where is that steve blum uh, voice actor sorry i'm not aware original form subtitled and what we were doing was an aberration his voice is holy shit what a radio voice that is he's starscream oh he's like a huge person then huh i haven't seen transformers but that's a name that i fucking know he must be like spike spiegel like, this guy is, like, super legendary voice actor status then. And uh, I was accused of ruining the art form several times during my career. And he made Damn. it his duty to go all out to please anime fans, to, to always make sure he did uh, the acting and translation justice, to make sure he went out of his way to always uh, show his appreciation for the fans. For Man, I feel kind of bad. Because, like, that guy... During the beginning of English dubs for anime, a lot of people are obsessed saying this is an abomination. You are not, you know, relaying the true feeling of what the source material is by butchering, butchering the dialogue or something. But then he's like, no, I promise that I will deliver you the most faithful one-to-one -one translation of what the anime intended to do. But then people still shut on English dub because of, you know, lack of emotion voice acting. But there's a guy, see, that's like a true legend where it's just like, I know what the fans want, I'm going to stay loyal to it, and I'm not going to enforce my own political agenda. None of that shit matters. I'm going to give the anime fans that the anime they want. But Katrina is like, nope, I am a savior. I am the messiah. I am changing this degenerate, you know, Japanese anime dialogue and insert my own woke Western ideologies. And you should be thanking me. Why are you not thanking me? You're saying that I'm doing a bad job? Well, shit, that's because you're a virgin, incel, loser, Nazi. It's like, how are you going to get people to support you when you just like say shit like that? This job that he's uh, able to be afforded due to the fans popularizing a certain medium such as anime. And he was like, throughout the documentary, he was talking about that. He didn't have like this like a uh, resentful take of like, man, fuck the fans. I'm going to do what I want. Fuck y'all. He was like, how does it feel to be part of something that's so positively shaped lives? Well, humbling. It never gets old. And it gives me a new center every time I hear a fan tell me that Toonami was their childhood. Man, what a benevolent god. Um, and I hear that a lot these days. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, humbled is probably the best word that would describe being even just the smallest part of any of that. And then you fast forward to that panel in uh, modernity and modern day where it's the complete opposite reaction is, well, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm a woman. I have a vagina. I'm like, what? What does you being a woman have to do with this? No, people just want faithful adaptation. It's Rent free, bro. These girls, these woke localizers, bro, fucking rent free. You say something, the immediately response is, I got a vagina. It's like, lady, nobody fucking asked. What are you talking about? It's like, fuck you. If you don't like what I'm doing, you're a botsy. You're a messiah. Like, what? It really shows, like, the, it really shows, like, how the shift has really, like, that, that's deranged. I wish all localizers who alters translations for the stupid agenda is a very unple uh, pleasant unemployment. You're like, you are deranged when you can't take a simple criticism or process it in a healthy manner and automatically conflate that criticism mm. with, oh, somebody hates you because you're a woman? Like exactly. Here's another one. Can a machine understand nuance and context and culture well enough not to butcher it? Can localizers? <laughs> Maybe the machines are better in localizers, man. Or if they hate you, they're a botty. It, it really shows you like the 
the decline of people who are involved in anime. These aren't fans. These aren't people who are trying to go out of their way. Like when I was watching an interview with the Cowboy Bebop voice actor, like he was like in the tsunami forums and everything, trying to bring it back when it got uh, cut off because I guess due to lack of popularity, they did like one last event to commemorate tsunami as a. Oh, dangers in my heart is also on target. Hold up. Hi, I fixed the mansplaining line in the latest episode of The Dangers of My Heart. This was me checking a few minutes ago. What? Did I just start explaining fashion to a literal pro model? If for people that don't know what mansplaining is, it's a term, um, it's a term used in scenarios where a man will explain to a woman about things that they may not even be that much experienced in, in a condescending way. So my guess in this specific example is like, I don't know, fucking Ichikao is talking about specific fashion, right? To Yamada, who is a fashion model, but he might have said some things in a more condescending way or it's like, I know more than you, even though you do this thing. And that's what mansplaining is. But I don't think that's probably the intention. And, you know, that's just another fucking localizer L. As a, as a show, he was somebody that was working with the fans, part of the fans, won the fans over due to his genuine love for the uh the medium of anime and it's just a complete reversal nowadays i remember getting that call to do the april fool's evening and uh how great that felt even if we only got to do it for one more night and to bring tsunami back to its former glory for at least that one night but uh, i got on twitter that night and i stayed up all night with the fans damn and it, it was crazy i think the viewership that night went from something like 200,000 viewers the normal viewership to like 1.4 million well, damn. i was just so excited to be part of that wave it was really fun it was really fun and I, I felt like i i had nothing to do with it personally it was the fans that brought it back so give yourselves a pat on the back out there you guys you you did an amazing thing and dude i don't know if he's just like such a genuinely good fucking humble person or if this is the most well-crafted manipulative fucking speech like like some classroom of the elite shit because everything he's saying right now, I'm like, let's go king, return of the king. I wasn't even there for it. I'm just starting to figure out who he is. But these lines that he's dishing out, this is like, oh my God, he fucking spitting, bro. He, he's on point. Uh, kind of an unprecedented thing, I think. So thank you. And I gotta say, man, these localizers is only gonna get worse because I'm gonna probably include it here. Like, there's tweets from the uh, like an anime insider saying that, "Hey, anime is not doing so well right now." Uh oh, this is a tweet. July seventh, twenty twenty four, eight hundred seventy thousand views from Justin Savakis, and he says, "I don't even know who he is." I still have two meetings to go to this uh, anime expo, but so far my takes away were. Number one, anime content bubble is probably gonna burst soon. Way too many shows and nobody can handle it. Not fans nor industry. Um, that kind of goes hand to hand with, you know, Joey Bissinger's video. Remember that video we watched regarding how anime industry is kind of falling apart? There is too much uh, emphasis on quantity over quality. Too many overworked artists and it, something's gonna give people are leaving you know the industry but there's probably still a pipeline of people coming in but basically that is like the bubble that's about to burst every new season you just see even more fucking shitty isekais from Karako, right <laughs> like every season there's like so many just bottom of the barrel anime where it's so mid barely just acceptable but we kind of just eat that shit up but like how long is that really gonna last for right and number two anime merch sales have fallen off a cliff especially figures everyone's kind of well figure sales i wonder if that is simply because everything in life is just becoming more expensive right it's not simply anime merch getting hit it's just Everything across the world getting hit because people just feel so strapped for money with cost of living going up, inflation. It's a global issue, but hmm, the anime industry is not looking too good, huh? Anime is being mass produced. Something's going to give regarding the you know, production and the quality of talents going on. But uh, who knows if this is just fear mongering. I have a feeling, to be honest, I feel like production will never stop. It has to keep going. And with AI technology coming in, I feel like there's just gonna be more shitty CGI animes that's gonna get pumped out. That more outsourcing, more offshore work, contractors, third party workers uh, that don't get you know, the same type of benefits. 
I, I feel like that is probably the direction if we're talking about, you know, getting to the bottom of the barrel in this run of capitalism with so much enemy being pumped out. It's so unsustainable. <laughs> More new gates? Oh, please, no. Right now, as far as uh, monetary value, and it may be due, he was saying it may be due to macroeconomics, like merch has completely, not completely, has drastically fell off, like merch. Yeah, the merch thing is interesting. Why is that? High inflation and less time spent at home post C word. Exactly. I can't say this because I'll get demonetized for whatever reason. Yeah, it's, it's just like, again, uh, it, everything just getting so expensive. Merch sales are going to drop down because the economy is in a downturn just globally. Sales, of course, anime and manga, they don't really make their uh, major profits from anime and manga because a lot of people pirate it. Um, so. <laughs> I don't think and hot take i don't necessarily think that pirating anime is the reason that the anime industry is failing because true fans after they've pirated an anime they are willing to go watch the dvd sales what really matters is the dvd sales and the merch sales i think pirating anime all it does is increase the accessibility for people to find potential enemies that they never even knew about and that, if they're true fans, they'll go out and support those IPs by buying more shit related to them. Another answer here, what do you think the burst is going to look like regarding the bubble of anime? Probably having the number of new shows each season, which is still 50, we might not even notice. Probably having the number, sorry, having the number of new shows each season, which is 50. <laughs> it is actually stupid. Sometimes I count the number of weekly seasonal animes that we check out, and... Every season, it's in the ballpark of like 20. How the fuck does that make sense? How are we watching 20 different fucking animes? And most of them are kind of trash. There's like the top, like the, there's like a couple anime where it's just like you can tell that love and passion has been poured into this by the studios. But a lot of the other animes is like, damn, this shit's like barely passable. I see that it's just, you know, min-max to just pump out to low quality content for the sake of what? I don't know. Fitting the bottom line? So like anime is like sort of like a loss leader, but it's a loss leader meaning a loss leader is like it brings in attention, even though it may lose money, but it brings in eyes. It's meant to grab people's attention to a new anime. Like, hey, there's this new anime. You might be yep. interested in the manga. You might be interested in the merch. So this anime insider is talking about, hey, um, anime is not doing so well right now. And it's not due to the popularity popularity of anime declining it's just sign of the time that's only going to get worse like these studios are going to look for ways to cut i mean like why are you surprised right and i'm not telling i'm not asking this the, the guy that made this youtube video i'm just asking him in general ways like why would you be surprised that anime is going down a downturn that merch sales are down when all you're doing is pumping out mid anime season after season right why are you surprised and you have other bullshit like woke localizers fucking up the source material as well like it makes a lot of sense to me. You're pumping out shitty mid-anime every season. You're pissing off the fans by having these woke fucking subs that no one asked for. And you wonder why people are not supporting these merch sales or like, you know, just like, or even DVD sales or just getting into more anime. It's simply because the product is shit. You're focusing on, qual you're focusing on quantity over quality. If you just like actually gave a fuck and gave out bangers of anime, I think that one anime, I think that one fucking peak anime is going to be more memorable and does more uh, widespread, I don't know, get more attention of anime fans to the industry than, let's say, 10 mid-animes. Just straight up think about it. Think about these mid-animes that we watched recently, like fucking Midgate, right? Newgate, sorry. Uh, what, are, what are some other fucking really mid-animes? Remonster, kind of, right? But just, like, compare those animes to something like Mushoku Tensei. Compare that shit to, like, Demon Slayer. One fucking series that poured love into the series will have so much more impact than 20 shitty animes that everyone's gonna forget fucking not even a season after. I'm talking three weeks after. Bro, the attention span for people watching these shitty animes, it's so low, and I don't even blame you, bro. By episode three, people are gone. Like, if people could just realize that, hey, just fucking stop pumping out as much as you can and instead focus on quality. And if you can do that, if you can have a huge title, some huge anime like fucking Mushoku Tensei or fucking Demon Slayer or even recently, what's, a, what's an anime that really sparks into my mind? 
maybe this season, like Tower of God or Wistoria, there's a lot of more buzz around that because of the love poured into it, right? That's going to do so much more wonders for the anime and the anime industry in a nutshell compared to like 30 shitty animes that people are going to forget in like fucking three weeks, man. Call. So they're going to use AI translations even more. And when it comes and when it starts to get even more sophisticated with the voice acting as far as AI, your job is definitely done. But it's something that I don't have sympathy for these people, these localizers, because and honestly, like, I really try to be empathetic towards the working class that are fucking losing their jobs because of AI. That's a tough spot to be in. But when you're going out of your way to actively just shit on your fans and just live rent free in your head and immediately fucking default your answers to you hate me because I'm a woman, I have a vagina, deal with it, fuck you. Y'all go out of y'all way. Like, there's memes of, like, these localizers, like, yeah, when we put these sneaky uh, political SJ. Bro, I cannot fucking read this. What is this fucking screenshot? Just remember, if there are many line changes in any anime, any script, anything ever that offended anyone who unironically uses terms like SJW and Feminist Agenda, I wrote them. Why are you so proud of that shit? That's so fucking cringe. Like, these terms are literally living rent-free in your head. W terms in anime, yeah, just know that was me. I'm, I'm gonna show that tweet in here, too. And then underneath that, there's this meme of the Snow White uh, evil witch where she's, like, creeping out of the basement or creeping into the basement. Like, yeah, uh, that's me. Like, almost being sneaky and snarky about it and actually being proud of what they... Yeah, and that's the thing. They feel so proud. They're so snarky. They're so proud that they are actively defeating sexism, racism... Fucking misogyny, Nazis, I don't know. You're not, it's anime. Just fucking stick to the script. Straight up, you know the line? Just put the fucking fries in the bag. Yo, just fucking put, just translate the anime. Just give me the subs. Nobody asked for your social commentary for anime. They do when they inject shit into the dialogue that has nothing to do with the original dialogue at all, but it's just an attempt to push worldviews or to push bullshit in there. Agreed. And to push like kind of cringy dialogue, like Agreed. just modern dialogue sometimes that doesn't fit with the anime in the world and kind of, kind of take you out of the world. Like when you say Agreed. shit like mid or something, I don't want to hear that. And I, I just don't want to hear that shit. That's all my thoughts for this video. Um, I know I'm gonna probably get some hate in the comment section. No, I, th I think what he said made a lot of sense. This is the first video that I've seen from, uh, what's this guy? Monty Music 90. Guys, go give this video a check. Go like the video, check out his channel if you're interested by it. I enjoyed how he laid out different screenshots pertaining to the talking points that he had. There was a lot of... I thought that we were just going to talk about the same bullshit Nokutan news that we've already covered over and over again. But this actually turned into completely something different. Almost a fucking 40 minute video just popping off and just like you know, woke localizes. But this kind of topic is very interesting. And the future with the rise of tech, I just feel like, you know, subs are going to get even better and the localized is going to lose their jobs and you reap what you sow. If you really want, you know, your jobs, if you really want to appease the people and have some people supporting you, you need to realize like, listen, people just want the anime subs. Try to think about what you can do better in AI. Offer a service that exceeds AI for the current time being. Later on, I don't think that's going to be possible, but that's it for me.